With the release of Jet Engine 3.6.1, we now have the ability to change our listing grid wrapper from a div to a ul. And I'll show you some modification we can make to even change it to an ol if needed. So now let's jump right into it. Here's the code that we need. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. Essentially, all we have to do is two steps. First, we copy this code. Then we need to apply a class name or a data attribute depending on whether you're using Elementor, Bricks, or Gutenberg. If you're using Elementor or the block editor, you just have to add a class name of listing-ul to your listing grid and it will automatically convert it into a ul if you're using bricks, then all you have to do is add a data attribute called data-listing-ul. And you can set it to any value, so you can set it to true. So I'll be showing you how to do it in bricks first, then in the block editor, and then finally in Elementor. So first, let me go ahead and copy the code. So I'll click on raw, control A, and then control C to copy. Then here we have a Bricks website that I created. So all I'll do is go into a code snippets plugin of my choice. In this case, I'll be using WP Codebox. You can use Code Snippets Pro or you can use your child theme if you want. So I'll just go ahead and create a new snippet. Then I'll give it the title, maybe Jet Engine Listing to UL and I'll paste it here so it only has this PHP and it's a PHP code with WP code box you can just set the type to PHP here so I'll save it you can leave it at default and then I'll just activate it so now that it's activated we can now go ahead and create our listing grid as normal so I'm just going to make it simple so I'll go under Get engine and then listing. Then I'll create a new item. I can leave it as post and this just to demonstrate UL. So I'll say UL. This will be with bricks or so bricks. Listing. Then I'll set it to bricks. That's because I have bricks views activated under jet engine, then jet engine. Let me go ahead and create the listing item. To save us time, all I'll just do is drop in a post title widget. Just click on it. So it just creates a post title and I'll set it to H3. The purpose is just to demonstrate how to convert it to a UL. So now we save this. This is our listing grid template. So now we have to add that listing grid into a page. So let me go ahead and create a page. So I'll just create a new page and this will be listing grid breaks test publish publish and then edit with breaks and all I have to do is just drop in my listing grid so I'll look for listing click on it you may want to put it in a section and do all of that but this is just to show you the test so let me go ahead and now click on the listing, go to general, and then I'll choose my listing, which is this UL bricks listing. Okay, that's giving me my listing. I'll save it. And let me preview it on the front end. At the moment, if I right click and inspect, you notice that everything is just a div, a div within a div. So everything are just divs. So now, all we have to do is come back to our listing grid. This is the listing grid. In bricks, go to your style tab, then go under attributes and then add attributes. And all we have to do is say data listing dash ul. So data dash listing dash ul and the value, just give it any value. So I'll just call it true. So T R U E. I'll save it and we we'll come back here and refresh. Now right click, inspect. And you can see we have an LI 
and we have a UL. So this is how we can get a UL LI structure in the listing grid. Previously, it was not possible, but they've provided a hook that we can use to now convert the div to a UL LI structure. So this is it for the bricks editor. For the blocks, because natively we can't add data attributes to blocks, so that's why we're going to add class names and it will do the same effect. So let me go ahead and create another listing grid. So I'll go back to my listing grid under Jet Engine. So Jet Engine listing components. And this time I'll create a new one. Same thing. I'll just call it UL listing for blocks. I'll choose the block create item. Doesn't really matter which one you used to create here. It just matters where the listing itself is placed. So you can use timber and twig, you can use the bricks, you can use blocks, as long as on the listing grid item itself, you add that data attribute or the class name. So in this case, I'm just going to use the dynamic field widget. It is set to post title and I'm fine with that. So let me save it. So we've created our listing template. Now let me go ahead and open the block editor. So I'll create another page. And this time I'll just call it UL listing block preview. And I'll drop in the listing grid item here. So slash listing. Okay. And I'll choose my listing source. Any of them will do because like I said, it doesn't really matter how you created the template. It just matters that you add the class name to the listing grid. So I'll drop it here. We have our listing. And by default, let me just publish it. Publish it. And let's view it. You see that by default, if you right click, inspect, it comes with a div in a div. So now let's go back and We'll go ahead and add that class name. So we'll come back to a listing block and we'll go down to the bottom under advanced to the additional classes. All you have to do is say listing dash UL, save, and let's go ahead and preview it. Right click, inspect, and now you see LI. So we get the UL LI structure. So that's it for the blocks. The same thing you do in Elementor. So we'll switch over to Elementor now and I'll do the same thing. So here we are in Elementor. I've gone ahead and I've added the code again to the WP code box. You can find the code by going to the link, which I'll leave to in the description. So once you've pasted the code here, now I can go ahead and create my listing grid. So I'll come under Jet Engine and Listing. Then I'll go ahead and create a new item. I'm just going to call it Elemental UL Listing. I'll create it in Elemental, create a new item. And the same thing, I'm just going to drop in a heading widget, set it to the post title. So we have our post title in there. And that's it. I'm not doing anything fancy. Publish it. This is our listing grid. Let me now go to an Elementor page. So I'll create a page and I'll just call it Elementor UL listing. Publish it, publish it, and then edit it Elementor. Over here, I'll drop in the listing grid again. So listing, drop that in, choose my listing template. I'll just call it um, Elemental UL Listing. Okay. So here we have it. If I publish it without putting in that class name slash data attribute, if you go over to the listing, right click, inspect, you notice it's just a div within a div. But now when I come back and I go to the advanced tab under the classes, so CSS classes, all I have to write is listing dash UL. Publish it. 
and go back to the front end to see. So now right click and inspect. And you see, we get the UL LI structure and we have our listing grid. That's it, simple and easy. Now for the bonus points, it's just a little tweak to the code to add a conditional logic that says, if I write listing OL, it should give me an OL tag and then listing UL, it should give me a UL tag. Now let's go ahead and just take a peek at the modification and hopefully I will send a link to them so that they can update the code and we'll come up with something better. So now let's jump back in. Here's the initial code that was created. Let me go ahead and deactivate it. And here's the new code that has been slightly modified. Let me activate it. And basically all I'm doing is that I'm just doing a condition. If the data listing is UL, then return UL. If the data listing is OL, return OL. That's all I'm doing. So now that this is activated, let me go back to the listing grid and this time I'll change it to an OL. I'll publish this. And let's see on the front end, if I right click and I inspect, you'll see at the top that we now have an OL with the allies. And that's how easy it is. So I want to thank them for including this hook that we can use to modify the listing wrapper. This is going a long way. So thank you, Jet Engine, and thank you to the person who provided the code. And I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, do leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.